Okay, so we're back in Long Island Sound and mainly targeting porgies today. This is a pure fishing video. Um, I think one catch and cook for porgies is more than enough. Anyway, I have my Zodia 68 light spinning rod back. Well, not back, I had to buy it again. But um, uh, that's a Stratic 1000 FK. And it's loaded with 8 pound uh, Daiwa J Braid X4, which is their uh, four strand carrier braid, and 8 pound Seaguar fluorocarbon leader connected with an FG knot. I'm using a 3 16th ounce um, Gamagatsu ball head jig and 3 inch gulp minnows as well as 4 inch uh, flat swarm. And I think next trip I'm going to experiment with um, small soft plastics just not even use gulp be a lot easier that's for sure so that was the first keeper uh, it was like a 15 inch fish so on this trip um, sort of self imposing a 14 inch size limit and six or seven bag limit it's I really see no reason to keep more than that I think the daily limit is like 30 and it and it's like 45 or 50 if you're on a party boat which is completely baffling to me what you're gonna do with all that fish they don't freeze all that well and um, there's a lot of them so but anyway as usual I'm netting them even the small ones just to uh, have better control when they're flopping around on the deck and yeah that that's my friend Zorin uh, I was also out with Lee and Chris uh, just a fun day on the water. Really good weather. Low pressure kind of fishing. And here is my first first sea robin that day. I think it's my only one. I know people are complaining in Long Island Sound that you know they're being taken over by robins, but this one's lucky. Um, I do plan on doing a catch and cook sea robin video, but I have to wait for my cousin to be free because um, I think the cooking videos, you know, with him filming on his real cameras, that that's the way to go. Um, anyway, you see, um, we're in about 20 to 25 feet, and I sort of cast not up current but where the spot is while I'm traveling to the spot okay. so by the time my kayak f gets there um, the jig is pretty much vertical and these porgies are really a lot of fun the way they fight that kind of short pumps and uh, I can imagine you know the pinky snapper and the tie that they catch in in the Pacific I mean those those things grow up to 30 pounds there you go quick release with the net okay. and again the hook set is sort of a slow lift and if you feel weight you just keep lifting um, Jesus. I find that the smaller porgies, they just couldn't get the hook. I mean, this jig has like a 2 watt hook, which is pretty small. And anything over 13, 14 inches can um, right, hook themselves very easily. But the smaller fish, they don't, you know, they just kind of nip at it. And here's our third species of the day. Um, it's quite There's a surprise. No I wasn't expecting this at all. But yeah, it's a cute like little micro yeah. striper. Oh, we'll be seeing a lot of these in the fall. Hopefully some bigger ones as well.
So here you see me on my kayak is sort of gliding t towards the spot and I kind of lob the jig out. Um, 3 16th ounce in this area is, is just barely enough if you have light enough leader uh, to keep you down on the bottom if you know how to control your boat. And this rod is just such an improvement over the Field and Stream uh, Ultralight Trout Rod from last week's episode. Um, it's, it's fast, but it's still very light action, so it loads up on a fish, but I can feel everything. I'm really a big fan of these uh, Zodius rods. I have four of them now. I lost two and replaced them after my kayak flip. They're pretty moderate fast action. They're general purpose rods, unlike a lot of the freshwater rods, which are super fast if you're going for a jig rod. But anyway, highly recommended. Here uh, I switched to a four inch flat swarm. Um, for no particular reason, I just happened to grab one out of my bait bucket. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is like blackfish jigging. This is like jigging blackfish where, you know, they don't suck down the bait, so you gotta hook them. I hear I'm um, talking Zoran's ear off Porky? since he just happened to be close to me. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think he was too impressed with my rod. Holy shit. Alright, I'm done. <laughs> um, I think this was my fourth or fifth keeper, so probably one or two more after this. Um, this isn't the biggest one. Uh, there was one that looked like a frisbee. It was like 16 and a half inches, but the tallest porgy. Anyway, here I'm trying fluking once we moved outside. Uh, this rod is also new. This is a 610 Zodius uh, medium action baitcaster. It replaced my 72 medium action, which I think is going to work better. The 610 balances better, and here we're in about 50 feet is what I'm casting into, half ounce pro. Um, five inch gold mullet. Yep, they always take it on the drop. So this ends up being just a short. Um, I, I really wasn't sure if there was any fluke there. So at least I know there's one short in that area. And this fish, yep, just popped off at the surface. And we talked about this, you know, they, they, um, I mean, if that was a keeper or a nicer fish, I would have kept much better tension on it. So now the wind picked up. I'm back porgy fishing outside. And now the 3 16th ounce is barely holding. I'm basically pumping the pedals just enough to keep up with the jig rolling on the bottom. Um, not the easiest way to fish. You know, and if you notice, um, I'm definitely jigging I just, I just see this it. jig on the bottom like one inch bounces, but you barely oh, yeah. see my rod tip moving. That's because you know, this rod is so much faster that the rod tip actually bounces a jig on its own versus the really slow action trout rod I was using last week. But yeah, they they don't want it jig very hard, just very slow bounces and then a lot of pauses in between. I mean, I, I don't know if this shows up on camera, but that is a big porgy. I think it might be the biggest one I've caught in this area. And yeah, porgy fishing, especially if you're bleeding them, can get a little messy. Yeah, definitely spend time cleaning the kayak. So anyway, here is the close encounter. Now, 
I nosed up to this rock pile, which is the red buoy, expecting the wind to float me back behind this rock pile. And right then, the wind kind of died, and the tide was bringing me forward. So at this point, I felt like I needed to point my bow into this boat's wake. And I did. It's, it's definitely half my fault what happens next because I nosed into the channel. The red side is that rock pile, so I'm about half a kayak's length into the channel. But I'm not so sure if this guy should have passed so close to me regardless. I mean, having the right of way is one thing, but I don't know if that gives you the right to run someone over. So yeah, words were exchanged, you know, this is New York, and um, this is like two minutes later. I retreated back behind the island, and this group of kayakers, I think they're students, um, there's one instructor among them, and they're getting ready for that small boat's wake that's about 10 yards off. Um, these guys came through two minutes earlier when those two boats were crossing past, I, I, you know, that could have been a problem. So yeah, let me know in the comments below. You know, I, I've never operated a boat. I'm not really sure what the percentage of blame lies in that situation. I felt that he should have slowed down. In fact, I don't think he saw me until he beeped his horn. And then, you know, he didn't slow down at all. Um, in fact, I think he passed by me, you know, three yards off my bow on purpose. But I could be wrong, and I'm open to advice and suggestions. So, not to end on a sour note, this is, I think, the last porgy I caught that day. Another nice one, definitely over 16 inches. Um, this one, I let free, because I had my six or seven keepers. Anyway, um, definitely a fun day of fishing, probably my last Porgy video. So, thanks for watching, and um, if you like what you see, please subscribe.